Hello guys, this is Imran from Imstech and welcome to the beginner's guide to Cinema 4D. And what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial series is going to be covering hopefully as much of Cinema 4D as I can possibly cover and there is a lot uh, because it's quite an in-depth uh, piece of s software. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is the strategy I'm going to be using is going to be actually doing different tasks and different activities and hopefully by giving you guys small bits of knowledge and um, small activities we should be able to understand generally what Cinema 4D is about and also what it's capable of doing. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to specifically go through each thing in this tutorial, um, but step by step over the series, uh, we'll, we should cover as much as I can possibly uh, cover. So let's just get straight to it. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is, this is a 3D piece of uh, software, so you'd be generating motion uh, uh, graphics using the 3D tools. And so at the moment you can see there's a green arrow pointing up, that's the Y axis. We've got the red one on the flow, which is the x-axis, and those are the usual ones when we're drawing bar graphs and so on. Um, but there's an additional axis I want to talk to you guys about is the z-axis, um, yeah, and which is the blue one on the ground. So that's the three dimension, um, or the third dimension. Okay, so now just to maneuver around our screen, so you can see I'm going zooming in and out, and I'm doing that with the uh, roller thingy majig on my mouse. Uh, we can also do this using the keyboard, and so I'm going to press the one button on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click and move. So you can see I can sort of move around my arena or my stage, and then I'm going to press the two and see what happens. This is zooming in and out, which I could have done with my roller ball thingy and three it just spins everything around okay um so that is the uh, sort of introduction to maneuvering now the task what we'll do in this task is create two objects the floor and have a ball and maybe have them bouncing um using some of the physics tags okay i think that's quite a cool introduction so the first thing we need to do is create a flow and right at the top here I've got this square and um, if I click and hold you can see I've got different uh, shapes I can create now there's two ways of creating a floor and um, the first one a lot of people like to use is use the plane and so you can see I've got the plane that has appeared um, just a flat um, background uh, sorry a flat floor and over here these orange buttons right here we've got this one right here so if I click and I move I can move um, depending on which axes I select, I can move them up and down and so on. Um, I have got the resize one, so if I click on the square right at the edge, or the cube right at the edge, the whole um, object that I'm selecting will increase or decrease um, proportionally. And then there is this other button uh, right here, which isn't the big cube at the end, but it's this little cube, which is the orange cube. Uh, hopefully you can see it. My mouse is on it at the moment. If I click and I hold, I can actually just um, increase that particular size or that particular point. Um, so that's qu uh, quite a cool thing. And then we've also got the rotate, which is uh, pretty uh, obvious. Um, so I'm going to delete this because I'll show you the better way, a better way of creating the floor. Um, where you see these this massive light with four arrows if you click and hold you can see the flow is there and I feel that is a better flow because um, it gives you more of a space um, so yeah that's um, the first thing the next thing I'm going to do is create a sphere so I'm going to click on this um, square uh, cube click hold and I'm just going to press the sphere now I need to uh, make the sphere a lot higher and you can see there's a sphere there now what I'm going to do is just render this one keyframe okay and rendering is just going to show me how it's going to appear when I um, export this or render this and I'm just going to click and this is the button right here to render and just to show you guys we can't see the flow because it's very little lighting or there's no texture or material and the ball it's also um, not very clear and also I want to show you guys the black area at the top is actually the sky which we can um, edit uh, later on um, Okay, so what we need to do is add some materials. So at the bottom right here, we've got the materials panel. I'm going to press file and new material. Um, and I'm just going to add this to the floor. 
and there's also uh, preset materials so I'm just gonna click on shader and just try this one see what this is about um, yeah so that's fine I'm just gonna click and drag over onto my ball uh, hideous looking one it is but anyway so yeah and oh yeah just to quickly mention we've got this object panel right here so you can see my spheres here and my flow is here and uh, we've added two elements the material um, so both of the material are present right here and I can actually just go in and delete the material and obviously go back and add the material rather than pasting it onto the actual uh, front of the object I can actually put it into the object bar here where you've got the down arrow and I can just drop it in um, and if I want to edit the material I double click and go here so click and change the color uh, maybe add a bit of uh, reflection um, can anybody see reflection it's there so I've clicked the reflection and yeah uh, that's fine so Oh, did I just cross it? Let's render this to see what's what. Okay, so you can see sort of a start has been made. Um, now, to actually animate this, I'm going to just show you guys these tools right here, the play button. So if I play, um, nothing happens because we need to add a few more physics tags. Um, and the way that is done is basically... Uh, if you just saw me, I just moved the, um, I, d I put some material onto the ball as well. There, uh, Apologies for that, um, for not actually mentioning that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is add some physics to this ball. So I'm going to click on physics and click on simulation, dynamic and add, uh, sorry, create a rigid body. You can see there's different ones, but I'm just going to add a rigid body at the moment. And I'm going to hit the play button just to show you guys what, see what happens. I press play and it goes straight through the flow. So obviously you can, you probably guessed it. I need to add a rigid body to the ground as well. I'm going to hit the play button and let's see, boom. So it hits the flow, bounces twice and it comes back up. I just want to show you guys when I added the rigid body, these two elements were also appeared next to the object. Okay. And the properties and all the settings are there um, on the bottom. This changes depending on what I've selected, where I'm moving my mouse at the moment. Um, so what I want to do now is just add a bit of bounce to the flow. So I'm just going to click on the flow object and then this uh rigid body tag that we added to the flow. I'm going to increase the bounce to 200. Just going to go a little bit crazy with this and hit the enter key. And I'm going to just play this. Sorry, go all the way to the back and play this. Now you can see this is bouncing nicely. Um, and you can, and what I want to mention to you guys right at the bottom is this timeline. These are actually frames or um, not, they're not actually representing a second. We could have 30 frames a second when we render this. So 30 frames of this would be one second. So you can imagine this is, you know, every frame is like, you know, a very, very a minute amount. Um, if you want to increase your frame, so at the moment right here it's 90. I can just press 500, um, hit the enter key. And then you can also move across the timeline using this. Um, so I'm just going to hit the play button and bounce, bounce bounce okay so just, i've covered a few things just a start of a, a warm-up activity really just an introduction of what uh cinema 4d is about what it can do what it can't do i've given you a lot of information really and what i'll try to do in the next uh tutorial is cover the basics of animation um which is also very in detailed um but we'll cover the basics so make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and i do intend to create a lot of uh, tutorials on this and i'll try and make them small bites of learning this just because this was an introduction it was a little bit longer but small bites of learning mini tasks mini objectives and we'll go through from there so make sure you guys let me know what you thought of the tutorial and make sure you subscribe take care